How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So recently in my Form 2 3D printer review, I showed this Gaia Anderson cat and I quickly explained that I had hollowed it out to save on resin and make this file more 3D printable in a resin process. And that's important because you don't want to print solid models in resin because you can't have infill like you can have on a standard FDM 3D printer. And a few people asked me to clarify how I did that in uh, Mesh Mixer. So in this video, I'm just gonna quickly show you how I prepare models for resin 3D printing. And this should be applicable to pretty much any resin 3D printing process, whether it's SLA or uh, DLP or whatever variation of those two. So let's get started. All right, so we've got Mesh Mixer fired up and this is the Gaia Anderson cat in its original uh, condition. So you can see it's got the got the entire model solid there and you don't want to print this like it is in resin printing because it will print solid. So what a lot of people will do is put drainage holes in and you can do that and I'll probably demonstrate it. But uh, as an example, I mentioned in the form to review, if you have holes, you know, roughly this size or so, um, it's not so great because as you let the parts cure, the trapped liquid resin sort of seeps or weeps out of those small holes and it can sort of uh, you know, leave an unsightly mark or uncured resin on the actual final print despite the rest of it being cured. So what I tend to try to do is actually make the entire thing hollow so you can get right in there with the isopropyl alcohol, clear it out and then you're good. And of course, it depends on the model but if it's like this where the base is on the ground, you don't care if it's hollow, it's actually fine. So let me just demonstrate how to do that. But first we need to work out our scaling because we're going to be hollowing the model out. We want to know what the wall thickness is. So figure out what size you want your print first. So go to analysis and units and dimensions. And this cat is a 130 millimeters high. So you see 130 millimeters there and you can change it as you wish. So for example, you can make it 150. You know, you're not going to see a visual change but it will change the actual size of the, of the model. But let's just go with 130, that's fine. So this is important if you're importing like uh, game figurines or whatever, uh, you know, miniatures, you want to make sure you get your size correct in this circumstance. Okay, so let's work on hollowing it out. But before we do that, we're going to have to extend the base face because when we, well, the process is we're going to hollow this model, but then we're going to cut it and we're going to cut it off at the bottom to leave that hole. But if we just hollow it now, there'll be sort of um, like a the, the surface here and we'll be cutting into the model. We don't want that. So what we want to do is edit and we want to choose generate face groups. So what this is going to do, you can see here, is actually separate the faces of the model into certain distinct groups called face groups, which is going to help us select just the base layer. So it has an angle threshold. Um, you yeah, know, we can change this as we like. This is probably lagging the, the recording up a lot. This computer is very sick right now. There we go. So different color, that's all we need. And accept. There we go. So we have our face groups. And you see like now it's sort of turned these areas of certain deviation into individual faces. So when we go to select, we can just double click, change our size of our brush. We can just double click areas and they completely select. Okay, but we don't want to select there. We want to select the base. So select double click and also this pore here. So any of the base faces you want to select, if the base of your model isn't flat, you can just uh, extend it out anyway. Uh, it will still work, but I do recommend a flat base if you're doing this method because you want it to sit flat on something, obviously. Okay, so we've done that and let's go to deform and transform. All right, so we're just gonna pull this down and doesn't matter how far you go, that's tons, that's plenty. Okay, accept. So we're gonna accept that and just find, just inspect your model to make sure that uh, there's no obvious errors or anything from doing that. If you pull in a direction that's not just directly down, you might get some weird glitchy stuff going on, but that looks good to me. Clear selection, okay. So with that out of the way, now we just need to hollow the model. So go to hollow and let it do its thing. Right, so I kind of wish Mesh Mixer would less let you uh, change settings and then update, but it just wants to update instantly. So the default is two. That's actually quite thick for a, a resin 3D print. I would go with one and a half. You probably might even get away with one depending on the model. You know, at, at the detail it prints, it's probably fine. And these are the, you know, solar accuracy and mesh density. The inside we don't really care about. So mesh, uh, mesh density, density, we can just turn down a little bit. Uh, but accuracy, we probably want to leave it as is. 
Um, and yeah, that looks good. So that's update hollow. All right, and there's our updated hollow. So you can see with the ghosted view, it's actually made all this bottom part hollow as well, which is exactly what we wanted. If we didn't extend that base area, it would have just made it hollow up to here and we would have still had uh, the surface at the bottom there. So we're going to just say accept and let that close. Cool, so we've got that accepted and our model is now hollow even though you can't really see it. So what we're going to do is plane cut, the good old fashioned plane cut. And let's move that down all the way, all the way. So if the increments are too coarse, like for example moving this, it's quite coarse, it's moving in two and a half millimeter increments, you can change it by hitting the up or down arrow, for example like that. Up makes it, uh, makes it finer, down makes it coarser. But here I can actually move it to zero and the model was actually on zero, which is handy in terms of its location in space. And you can see it's cut it there nicely and we get that beautiful clean hollow inside of our model. So accept, let that do its thing. And there we go. So we've got our model. It looks the same visually from the top, but it's completely hollowed out. So when we go to actually print it, it will print hollow, which means it's going to have less suction forces on the, the first few layers of your resin tank, and it's going to print with much less resin than if it was solid. But cleaning it is the main thing. You just dunk it in your IPA, and the IPA gets right in, cleans out. This is all dry. This is beautifully dry. It cured lovely. Whereas just with holes like this, uh, you can get a bit of seepings. But uh, let's just go through how to do the holes easily using the hollowing command just in case your model can't get away with this. For example, you want to see the base and you just need a hole. Uh, let me just quickly show you how to do that. So I've just pulled a sphere in here and for example, let's say you wanted to print this model as it is and you don't want to split it into parts. I would normally break this into two and then do the hollowing like I just mentioned and glue them together afterwards, but let's say you have to print it as one. So we're going to need to use drainage holes to save on resin. So to do that, it's pretty much the same process, except instead of extending any faces, we're going to do it all within the hollowing command. So just go to hollow, like so, and then we want to change our offset distance again. Um, I, I, as I said, for the scaling we're printing at, I like 1.5, but you know, use your own judgment. So there we have it, the offset at 1.5 and now the latest versions of MeshMix actually have this generate holes command built in. So you can choose how many holes you want and what the radius is. So you notice the radius slider only goes up to three, but you can actually enter any size you want. It will do it. So uh, let's say this, this model needs two holes, for example. That's fine. And let's make those holes six. You could get, a, get away with smaller, but again, going back to the example, guys, um, the smaller they are, the slower it is to get the resin out, the harder it is to get your IPA uh, isopropyl alcohol in to clean it, and it's not going to cure inside because there's no UV, UV rays aren't going to reach in there. So you want to make the holes as big as possible and ideally make it completely hollow like that. But let's make it six and let's generate some holes. There we go. So there's some holes and normally in your model you want to put them in an area where you're not going to see them. So for example, with the cat, you could put them under the arm here, like one there, and then you could put one on, under the base as long as one of them's in a different plane. Uh, I generally say you should use two holes because again, with suction, um, you imagine you put a hole in a bottle and then tip it upside down, it drains quite slowly, but if you put a hole in the top, it drains much quickly because the yeah, air can get in. So for that, I'm happy with this and let's say accept. So this is basically combining a few different commands in one. It's actually doing a Boolean difference but it's all just built into the same command. So now I've got this, this sphere with two holes in it nicely. I'll use plain cut to demonstrate how it looks. Like that, there you go. And that'll print fine. But again, ideally, I would have actually printed that in two halves. And once you're happy with it, you can just click the model you want, for example, the cat, and then file export and uh, export it as an STL to bring into your, your software for your resin 3D printer. And that's how I hollow out models for resin 3D printing. So thanks for watching guys, hope you found this quick tutorial useful on hollowing out your models and preparing them for resin 3D printing. Let me know in the comments what you think and any other tips and tricks you might have for preparing your models for resin printing. It is a different process, it's a little bit hard to get your head around if you've been printing with FDM for a long time to, trans to transfer to liquid resin 3D printing but I reckon the results are worth it. You get such a good finish. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, guys, and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, hit that subscribe button. Helps us out a huge amount. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.
rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into warfare. He has actually...